I'm Max Egan. I'm a mechanical engineer and MBA graduate from the University of Alabama. And I'm Travis Egan. I've been part of the manufacturing sector for the past 25 years. My son and I have traveled across the country to see the amazing advancements in renewable energy within manufacturing. For our final season, we decided to explore the world of autonomous vehicles, the batteries that power them, and the people and places responsible for its future. This is Manufacturing Explorers. Where is this kid? This is nice. It, uh, it's cold got out here. Fire set up and everything. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just what I need. Warm myself by the fire. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's, let's get going. Innovation Factory. Here we go, Mr. Monroe. Today we are headed to Monroe and Associates, run by Sandy Monroe, who started his engineering career as a toolmaker before he joined Ford in 1978. Since the early 90s, Sandy has assessed and analyzed every electric vehicle with potential by completely tearing them down and showing what he finds on Monroe Live, a successful YouTube channel with a great following. Needless to say, Sandy and his team have parts and pieces from every EV imaginable at their facility, so it will be exciting to see what he has in store for us to take a look at today. Mr. Monroe. Hey. How are you? Welcome. Welcome to Monroe and Associates. Thank you Come so much for coming. My yeah. son, Max. Max Good, Max. Max. Hi. Hi. Max. Hi. How are you guys? Hi. Great. So great to be here. Well, uh, we're going to try and help you out with, uh, with your studies and your, um, and your videos. So maybe what we can do now is we'll dive into the factory. Uh, we, we're definitely going to have to have the cameras ready so you can... I imagine it's like Willy Wonka's, uh, you know. Chocolate factory? Yeah, right, right. Well, maybe. I don't know if we have any Oompa Loompas, but we'll check that out. <laughs> if we can find one, we'll get it in there. All so, right. Paul, let's go down. Uh, let's go out this way. Let's here. do it. So come on in here. Um, this is our uh, this is our factory. Um, this area right here right now is set up for people who want to come in and uh, basically look around at the different vehicles. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have my son get a chance to see all of this. I'm super geeked about EV technology. I'm just excited to dig in with my uh, engineering background and really see some of these pieces and the yeah. transformations that are undergoing up up close and personal. Well, cool. Well, uh, we'll show you pretty much anything you want. Let's start off with the, uh, the Tesla uh, Model 3. This was the first Tesla we took to pieces. And when we tore it apart, um, I was uh, very, very unhappy. If you look here, you can see that I've got notes all over this thing. There was 120 parts in here. The fastening was ridiculous. This was like some kind of a science experiment. Here we've got um, a different, two different styles of laser welding. This one over here has got spot welding, and there's two different kinds of spot welds. One's concentric circles and the other one, I mean, it was just absolutely ridiculous. So this is the Model Y from 2020. 2020, okay. Okay, so <laughs> this we did in uh, 2017. This is 2020, and now look what, uh, look what Elon's done here. So this is two castings. They made a right and left hand casting because they couldn't get big enough presses. Mm -hmm. So they made this half and that half. There is two straps that held it together, one here, one there, mm -hmm. and then this pan that, uh, that covers up, um, covers up the, 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 the last uh, bits, if you like, inside. As opposed to one, essentially one full piece, single well, piece. guess what? Eight months later, that came out. And ah. now we're looking at the other Model Y. And this Model Y has a single casting and it has more in it than what that one did. And consequently, even though aluminum is more expensive than steel, 
when you look at total accounted cost, this is much cheaper than the conventional 120 parts with all the welding and stuff like that. Nobody, nobody in the auto industry prior to Tesla ever thought that that casting system that they've got over there, which is this, would ever hit the marketplace. It really was fascinating seeing the progression of the Tesla from 2017 Model 3 to the 2020 Model Y Tesla and the manufacturing that evolved to become more efficient over time. It really underscores the work that Sandy and his team are doing here at the facility. With those results from 2017 gaining a lot of press coverage and even in part spurring Tesla on to become more efficient. But beyond the structural manufacturing of these EVs, Sandy and his team have cataloged all the parts and components of these vehicles and it's truly a sight to see. All right, this is amazing. Like you've got, I don't know, it looks to me like almost every EV on the market the components, you know, torn apart here on these tables. Tell us why you do this and what this means. Okay, the reason we do it is so we can figure out the cost, uh, the weight, the efficiency and effectivity, the different design techniques that are being used on the electric motors or the, or the gearboxes. In essence, the ultimate goal is to find out how people be become uh, cost effective, but also um, how do they get the extra range? So uh, Tesla gets more range than everybody else, even though their battery packs are like somewhere around 72, 74 kilowatt hours. And yet when you look at something like the Audi, that battery pack is huge, it's over 100, and yet it gets less range than, than what Tesla gets. So when we get into this, we have to look at we have four things that we look at uh, really uh, tightly. One is uh, aero. Th that makes a big diff. Once one of them is, um, is the uh, friction that you're gonna get, rolling friction. There's friction all over the place. Friction inside the car, around yeah, the car. Around the car. Well, the around the car, is that's aero. The aerodynamic. Yeah, and then the friction in the wheels, the friction in these electric motors and whatnot, okay. all that sort of stuff. Speaking of electric motors, this is one component in the manufacturing process that I think a lot of people forget about. The lack of an internal combustion engine in the vehicles makes the manufacturing process a lot more simple and efficient for a vehicle powered by an electrical motor. But I was really curious about how much difference there really was between the manufacturing processes for both, and I was pretty surprised at the answer. All right, so one thing that I'm super interested in is just the sheer size differential between the motors for it traditional internal combustion engines versus electric vehicles. Um, so we've got an internal combustion, combustion engine here. Here's the electric vehicle engine. Uh, how, do the, how do the powers like compare, the, the cost to manufacture, the size? Yeah. The rotor is not in here. Um, it's right. sitting over there, but it's too dangerous to put it in. So we're gonna say that if you put a cover on here, it would be about that high, that would be the electric motor. This engine, this engine right here is one that we actually helped design. This is the Pentastar engine. It's the most effective, efficient V6 out there. Nobody has anything that is as good as this is. Okay. This obviously is a lot small. This is a lot smaller than that. And when we start looking at um, cost and weight and whatnot, this is dirt in comparison to that. Try and to we, lift this. What's that? <laughs> Try to lift this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lift this one up, I dare you. So this has gotta be a little bit more powerful than this, right? Wrong. This is more powerful than that. And the reason here is because this has a torque curve and it's limited by how much fuel and air I can get inside this thing. It's a yeah. six. If I wanted something like that, uh, if I needed the power that this thing has, you'd be adding at least two more cylinders on here and uh, you're not gonna have pop cans like that one has. You're gonna have to have big giant cylinders and you still have to ramp it up. It still has to ramp up to its optimum, optimum speed in order to give me the best horsepower it can. So let's put things into perspective. <clears throat> I, could put a, I, could be a, I could put a battery line in this little area right here. Um, if I wanted to make that, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at uh, 200,000 square feet. Depending on, you know, that's including, I'm gonna do my own machining or pistons and stuff like that, 200,000 square feet. 
So you're gonna go from 10,000 to 200,000 square feet to make that. The last critical component about EVs we had not talked about was the batteries themselves. Sandy brought us over to see the battery system that would go under the Tesla Model Y, and it's quite the opportunity to actually see these opened up as it's extremely difficult to extract these from the vehicle, and Sandy and his team had to develop processes to do so. All right, so now we're looking at a uh, battery pack itself, right? This is what's gonna go underneath the vehicle. And now we're looking at the Model Y battery pack, is that correct? Correct, yeah. Um, so can you maybe give us some scope on what this is and it, uh, how much it weighs for some perspective? Yeah. Um, Cause this is what's gonna go underneath that vehicle, correct? Yes, okay. actually it's got some clever things that I'll talk about later. This one, this is the this is the 4680, and the 4680 you can see is a whole lot bigger um, than these ones. And the reason for that is because I can get more power density out of that can than I can out of these little cans. But anyhow, this, this cell gives you about 30% more power and energy per weight. So this is really a, 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 the right way to go, yeah. And this kicks the daylights out of pretty much everything. Everything you see here is passe now because of this. So your team gets the fun of buying this car or getting this car, however you attain it, and then tearing it apart right. and seeing how it's made and, and comparing that from model to model, from manufacturer to manufacturer, right. to find what's the best, best way forward and, right. re and refine the design and manufacturer ability of these vehicles. Correct. Um, and the other thing that's kind of missed there was um, the material science and, um, and the manufacturing techniques that are used to, in order to make this. Uh, actually, blasting this off was no easy trick. Uh, we had to use, we had to invent a machine to get the pink stuff off. The, what, what is the pink stuff? The pink is stuff foam? is, in, is uh, it's foam um, that uh, conducts heat, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't burn. That's fascinating talking to you and seeing all that you're doing. We hope to, uh, we hope you start manufacturing something in the future. We can come back and see what you're doing. All right, buddy, what'd you think? I thought that was super cool. Sandy's a great guy, and I loved getting to understand why they actually deconstruct these cars for their clients. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, we got to see just about every vehicle, right? I mean, they got the F-150 Lightning here, the new EV. This is one from China, the Skywell. We've got the Rivian, and of course, we've got our Tesla. Our good old Tesla. I mean, great day today. I'm not sure what uh, we have in store for tomorrow, but a lot new uh, manufacturing interest and challenges. Absolutely.